Tuesday that feels like a Monday to you all. Um, I'm pulling up comments right here. We have quite a few people here with us this evening, which is really exciting. Welcome to the YouTube channel. If this is your first time viewing, my name is Becca Oaks. I'm an owner and craft educator here at Oak and Lamb. And Anna, hello, that you hear over there is my sister and also an owner and craft educator. If you are um, a seasoned Oak and Lammer, you may have thought Rachel would be here. Uh, Rachel is at the beach. She is living it up at the beach on 4th of July week. I'm not really sure what she was thinking. Actually, it was not. It wasn't her idea to go that way. I cannot imagine beach on 4th of July. No. Whew, crazy. But did you all have a great holiday weekend? What did you do? Um, we had a very eventful weekend. We Sunday, we went to um, Nashville, which is about three and a half hours from Morristown. We went to Nashville and took the kids to see Dude Perfect. We love Dude Perfect as a family. This is the, fir the third time that we've seen them. Um, so we did that and then we left Nashville and immediately drove to um, our family event that we do every 4th of July. And then we were up till God, Anna, what time did we go to bed? It was almost midnight. Way too late. Yeah. I'm not a late night person. We're exhausted. Yes. Anyway. Um, no, cat. I don't like it now. I got stuck because, you know, Becca makes me do things I don't like to do. Do you want to do this? Do you want to switch right now? No. I didn't think so. Uh, <laughs> um, <laughs> anyway, Mary, happy birthday to you today. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Elliot, what are you eating over there? Jenny just said that the picture is blurry. Is anyone else seeing that? Uh, flip this flip the screen around. Let me see. It, it doesn't look blurry on that screen, but... It's not blurry. Um, so your streaming rate may be a little low. It may need to be adjusted. So go to your settings and adjust your streaming rate. Um, Dude Perfect is... Amazing. It is amazing. They're, they started out on YouTube really quickly, and then we'll get started. Uh, they started out on YouTube. They were in college. They were like college friends, college roommates, and they posted this random trick shot video. And overnight, it went absolutely viral. And um, what was... Is it Sports Illustrated? One of the big sports whatever ended up sharing it and featured them and all this stuff. And then they started just doing trick show, uh, trick shot videos and different sorts of videos like every other week. Um, now they have over 55 million YouTube subscribers. Um, anyway, they're really great guys. They are, uh, they're Christian. And so I don't ever have to worry about what my kids are hearing or seeing on there, which is really nice. Um, they're really stinking funny and they're super talented. So they do like these different shows. It's not just trick shots. Now they have like overtime, which is like a panel of things and they bring like, it's like a, basically a show and tell. Um, and it's like cool, not cool. And they do a will unfortunate where they have to spin this wheel and do something that's Shave really their eyebrows terrible. off. Or... Anyway, there's a lot of entertainment. They do battles back and forth, like basketball things. And tr I don't know. Look it up. It's really cute. If you have any um, kids at all in any age in your... It's so wholesome and you don't have to worry about anything. Yeah. And... I mean, if you're competitive at all, you would love it. I'm telling you, I might enjoy it more than my kids. But check them out. They're really amazing. They also have this segment called Get Crafty, which... It's cracks hysterical. me up. I would love to somehow partner with them eventually. Uh, that's a pipe dream. It's like a it's like a bucket list. Partner with Dude Perfect on Get Crafty. But anyway, um, YouTube's telling me it'd be a good time to insert an ad, and I'm just gonna tell that it's never gonna happen. How do I make that go away? I don't know what you're talking about. It says now would be a good time to insert ads. Creators earn more money inserting ads with more viewers are watching. Well, you ignore that. I'm not <laughs> sure. <laughs> it's probably said, Anna, learn how to produce. Yes. No, I, I don't know. Um, uh, okay. Anyway, what we are making, was there anything else that I needed to address? Any comments or anything like that? Not really. Everyone's just saying happy birthday to Mary. To Miss Mary. Okay. Amazing. Really quickly before we go to the project, let's talk about the schedule this week. Uh, we have talked about it a little bit. 
Um, we are going to be live tomorrow at 6 p.m. Eastern, and we said Thursday at 6 p.m. Eastern. However, I'm going to have to scoot that back to 5 30 because I got scheduled to be on worship team at church on Sunday, so I have to be at rehearsal Thursday evening at 6 30. So, not TMI. Um, I'm just being raw and real with you all. So, it will be changed to 5 30. I haven't changed it yet. But Anna will be here with us for all of those. Anna's live tomorrow is on pegboards. So that's going to be really funny. She's giving me an ugly look right now. Oh my gosh. Yeah. <laughs> she's going to be teaching you all about how her brain works when she's putting these together or, or doesn't, doesn't work. work. <laughs> uh, and then Thursday's live is all about adhesive. So if you are new to crafting, uh, we're going to talk a lot about adhesives and different sorts that are available, what you do want to use them for, what you don't want to use them for, that kind of thing. So join us, um, put a reminder on your phone, hit the little notification thingy on YouTube so that they can remind you. And if you are not a subscriber to our channel already, go ahead and hit subscribe. I mean, I have to wash my hair tomorrow. You need to wash it. Oh yeah. Well, that's because she has salty chlorine pool water in and it Sprite. and Sprite that our niece poured into it accidentally <laughs> yesterday. But so. she's one and cute, so I can't even be mad at she's her. She's adorable. <laughs> she's adorable. Anyway, let's get started. On the thumbnail photo, you probably saw this cute little project that has a little hook on it. And that's what we were gonna make, except that I got here today and realized that my hook is, the screw in it is too long. That's what happens when you Do are- Do we not have more screws? Well, it's attached. The screw is attached. Oh. Go overboard or overhead so they can see. Overboard. Overboard. Okay. So I thought this is, I'm going to be really, um, I don't know, smart here, grab a hook that already has this in there and then I can just pre-drill like a pilot hole, screw that in there. It'll be amazing, except, I, yeah, I had two kids with me. I was just trying to get in and out. So um, you can make this project and then put this in here. But what you still could, it would just stick out the back. You could, fun. you could. What we're making today instead is just this project. And then I'm going to put this cute little. Cat is repulsed by your dirty poster board again. Well, cat. Um, but it's got pretty flowers next to it. It you, Well, and it's easier to see on this than a bright white one. <laughs> so I'm just thinking of you, cat. I think it's going to look like a fantastic work of art by the time we're finished with it. Look, we can sell it on eBay for millions. I like that. I yeah. like that. We'll we'll do a bidding war for you all. Anyway, we're gonna put this on here. Is mom watching? Is mom here with us? Mom. Ah. Anyway, this is gonna be mom's because she is a fabric hoarder. Um. Anyway, go. Let's go. No, we'll stay right here for supplies. You put this over here. I have are I've pre-cut the design today just because the Glowforge is loud and all that fun stuff, but we'll go through all of it. I already have these cut out. I, I did this one out of uh, walnut so that you could see how pretty it is with all the, the grain and stuff. And the cool thing about this is, I wish I had thought about it beforehand. We also have a maple, which is a light wood. And if I had cut it out and then sort of interchanged some, then I could have done like light right here and the dark and mix those two and not had to paint or stain or anything. It would have just been really pretty and raw and natural. And then maybe even throwing in a red wood, like a, a red oak or something like that um, to add a third color would have been like really Dougie neat. would have approved of that. Yeah, he would have liked that. Um, anyway, so that is an option. And this is a cut file that is an oak and lamb cut file. It comes so that it has this back piece. It has this frame and then it has this right here so it's literally as easy as importing the cut file into your design software glowforge in our case um, and selecting cut and, and and materials i also cut one out of mdf and the reason that i cut it out of mdf is because it is easier in my opinion to paint mdf especially on a live a lot of times i haven't painted this particular wood yet um, I got this wood from WAI Supplies. We really like them for all of our laser cutting uh, product material, project materials. And I haven't used their wood before with paint. The, the proof grade wood from Glowforge has kind of a seal on it. 
and it makes the paint not stick very well. It sort of slides off. Um, Anna, did, was there something that was being said? Um, I thought that I saw earlier that Jenny said that she was making a quilt square like this right now. Yeah. I think that's awesome. That is awesome. Jenny's a great quilter. I love her color choices yes, too. Yes, I do too. Very good color choices. Um, anyway, and so I, I'm using MDF because I didn't want to risk that. And MDF is a whole lot cheaper. So if you're wanting to create something like this, then honestly, the look, especially if you're painting it, the look is so similar that I would go with MDF pretty much 10 out of 10 times. Would you not agree, Anna? Yeah. You're gonna have to quit making those facial expressions. I think you wanna say something. No, I have it. something in my eyeball. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we have this pre cut out. Again, we have the, the back and the frame and the little pieces here. And then I just have some acrylic paints. I have white and I've chosen three other colors for the actual quilt square. And then I have black for the fabric quarter. I also have just some reverse tweezers so that I can easily um, place your dot. Make No, make these oh. more stationary when I'm painting them. And then I have one sponge. I'm gonna do all of this with one sponge. That's gonna get nasty. No, it's not. Because I'm gonna show you, I don't know why I've never thought of this. I feel like you need to paint the outside of that frame black to tie in the fabric quarter. We might do that for you, Anna. Thanks. He smells. Apparently Elliot wants something. She wants some love. Our, my doodle's here and she she loves Anna for some reason. I really <gasps> unaware of why. <laughs> Oh, last I have uh, Gorilla Wood Glue. This is... Everyone says your messy, your messy board's distracting. Oh my gosh. <laughs> you all are divas. <laughs> is this better? I, I want to keep that messy board. You better not throw it away. I'm locking I'm not it. I'm throwing it away. I still use it. I used it today. <laughs> Okay, is everyone happier? Happier? I don't know yet. Okay. I mean, this has glitter and everything on it. This is a well-loved piece of art. Is that the Ohio star pattern, Becca? I can't tell you. We Becca doesn't have a clue, guys. Nope. She just... I just made a geometric pretty. Pot pattern. Yes, yes. Okay, so let's get started. And if you want to go to the third option... Let me pull up here. Um, I'm going to turn my Glowforge on just so that it will preview appropriately. Kat says, yay, Stacy, we won. <laughs> I got I to gotta give you something, right? Okay. Um, let me delete this really quickly. And then we'll start from scratch. Still had the old pattern or the pattern in it. So um, this is showing where it has already cut. And it will update in just a second because it's focusing. So I'm going to import my artwork. Actually, first, let's go over into Illustrator. And I want to show you how I did this. This the, the fabric hoarder wording is not a cut file. But I want to show you how easy it is to create your own pieces like this and also import them into, Ill, or into your Glowforge software. Is Kim here? Have you seen Kim on here? What's she her just last got, name? I can't say it. Can D you try? D-E-L-I-S-E. I've not seen that. Okay. Um, anyway, she just ordered a Glowforge, and so I'm excited for her to get to play around as well. Some people like the messy board. I know. I liked it, too. Miss Linda did, too. I like, okay. Um, okay, so really quickly, all you do if you want to create something like this and then pull it over into Design Space or into the Glowforge, this is Illustrator. You can do the same thing with Inkscape, Silhouette Studios, Affinity Designer, whatever design software you want. But I love Illustrator, so that's what I'm going to teach. Go get your I'm just going to put Go in a text box here, type in fabric and hoarder, and then select the font that I want. This one is going to be festive and then the bottom is falling leaves both of these oh, are from no. um, creative market so then I'm just going to come over here and press create outlines I have to do this step if I don't do this step then every software that I try to import this file into is not going to see that there are cut lines here 
and here. Right now it only looks like a line like this, right in the center. So we have to press create outlines. Yes, Anna. Oh gosh. Wait, no, I was trying to do the Rachel. You're not as cute as her. I can't help it. Um, so someone says, what else can we use if we don't have a glow forge? They are super expensive. Can this be cut out? on yes you can cut it maker. out with chipboard chipboard on your maker cut it out from chipboard on your maker yep. absolutely great question we're going to press create outlines like i said and when we do that the text box goes away and then you can see here we have all of our fun lines and if we were to leave it that way then when i pull this into the glowforge software it's going to cut this out separately each letter out separately similar to what would happen if we pressed attach instead of weld in design space and is acting very bored over there <laughs> but before i hit a button that is going to kind of weld all of these pieces together i want to ungroup first and move some stuff around so we're going to ungroup and then I want to... I probably should be paying attention to this. You probably should. Bring this down a little <laughs> bit. Make it a little bit longer because I want to put hoarder right here and I need this to be a little bit longer. And then I sort of just played around here. And... Just placed these things until I liked them. Now, one thing that is a massive pet peeve of mine, I don't know why. This is not the same font but it has the same feel. And for whatever reason, when I size something down like this, and this is so much thinner than this, and it's supposed to sort of look like the same type of font, I hate when it's a lot thinner and this is thicker. It's just my personal preference. So what we're going to do to fix that is to select all of that here. And then we're going to increase the stroke. What's wrong, Anna? Um, I just wanna know where Kat has been because she said, question for the peanut gallery. I'm sure this has been spoken of, but is there somewhere in the Facebook group for future files we might like created? Yeah, there is. That's a great question. Oh, cat. Um, let me go there for a moment and I'll show you. Pinned here at the top of the group under featured files. You can come all the way. I think it was one of the first ones that we did. Cut file requests. Click on that, read, and the, read the disclaimers. Go and ask for an obscene amount of files, Kat. Becca's gonna grant all of them for you. No, no, it says right here. <laughs> Just because you asked for it does not automatically mean we will be able to create or provide it for you. You should just put Please Kat's do not name be offended if your request is not granted. <laughs> Okay, back over into, Sorry. Oh, oh, that's my kids with Dude Perfect, sorry. Um, anyway, so I'm gonna select all of this right here and I want to increase the stroke just to make it a little bit thicker. And that actually looks pretty good. Let me move this over just a little bit. Now what I wanna do, if I were to save this as is, um, it would not cut on this outer stroke because it doesn't see the stroke this is all stuff that i will be teaching in our illustrator course too but this is just giving you an idea of how illustrator works how cut file creation works and things like that um anyway so to fix this what i want to do is select everything here come up to object path and outline stroke and then you can see it now has all of these outlined and i can push this button right here which will get rid of it i'm going to Fire Anna. She's being an idiot. <laughs> You're super distracting. And then I just want to size this up and place it. And one thing that I did, this is one reason why I wanted to show you. <coughs> one thing that I did for this particular um, look was I wanted to connect all of this so that I didn't have to manually place them um, as we went or as I was making this. So to do that, I just kind of overlapped there and there, made this one touch, made this touch a little bit here, here, and just did some, you know, kind of work like this. 
Mine looks different than this, but you get the idea. And then what you want to do is select everything. And then under your Pathfinder tool, you're going to click Unite. And when I did that, see right here where all these extra lines were? I hit Unite. It's all connected. Then I would save by pressing File, Export, Export As. SVG is already selected, and then I would just type whatever name I want in, save it to my desktop. So now that we have that created, we can import that right here from wherever we saved it. And then we have, it's huge, size it down there just by dragging and selecting here. And then I'm also going to import the other file. You can do more than one at a time. If I can find where it says, Glowforge, it is in alphabetical order. How funny. Quilt pattern. Okay. So this is coming in and then you can size like I did by dragging and selecting or you can size down here by pressing this little ruler and sizing it. I like the, the six inch height so I would just leave it there. And then here I would bring this over and then kind of just size it until I like it. So this piece right here that I have, the MDF that I have in the Glowforge is not gonna be big enough to cut this. Um, so I'm just gonna make it a little bit smaller so that you can see. What you would want to do is place this on the material where it will fit. And then I wanna come up to the top where it says unknown and I'm going to type in medium draft board or because I've used it recently, it's in my recent material. So I can just select that. Um, that is the material setting that we use for the eight inch MDF from WAI. So we have that and you can see here, this is red and this is blue. That's because this particular file is set to cut, which is what we want. This file is set to engrave and we don't want that. To change that, we just click on it and then select whatever we want. If we wanted it to score, then we would do that and hit cut, and then we would press ready to print and then press our flashing blue button. So it's that simple. Are there any questions about any of that, Anna, that I need to address before I move on? Not that specifically. Okay. Is there something else? I Someone wants to know, and I can't remember who it was, oh, I think it's Stacy. when the May, June Craft Challenge winners will be announced. That's a good question, Stacey. Um, I intended to do that today and 100% forgot to do it until you just mentioned it. So I will make a note and we will announce that tomorrow. She also said, can you fire someone who doesn't really work there yet? She does on 22%, so I'll just kick her out before. It's just 22% of zero of at nothing. this point. Yeah, 22% of nothing. <laughs> yeah. Maybe yes. someday it'll be yeah. 22 of something. <laughs> A dollar or even. <laughs> <laughs> I take 22 cents right now. Then I have to pay taxes on that. You're, you're an idiot. <laughs> That's a loss. Okay. Go back to the overhead camera and we'll get started on this. Now, to make it simple, what I did was went ahead and placed all the pieces in here like they were supposed to, to be. And I kept referencing the image so that I could see which one was supposed to be in what direction. And then I separated them. The reason why I think it's important to go ahead and do this is because you don't know if, for instance, you're, well, I, it's just easier for me to do it that way. Um, so I'm going to pull all of these that are supposed to be yellow. Like this. And then I will pull, well, let's put all of them right here. And then I'm going to put my yellow paint on top of it. And then I'm going to pull these that are going to be our green, bluey green color. And I'll put my blue paint on top of it. And then I'll pull these, which will be white. Place the white paint. I'm not using black because I've already painted it. And then we have our pink paint right here. That, it's just to make things easier in my head. You do you though. 
Um, really quickly before I start painting, I'm gonna glue this down, this frame here, so that it will have time to dry before I start placing the other pieces. Now, um, this wood glue dries in about, honestly, it says 15 minutes, but sometimes it's even less than that if I don't use too much. Um, but it has a little bit of workable time, which is nice. Just put this here. It doesn't take a ton, but you do want to get it, especially on these other pieces, covered nicely. Yes, Santa. Are you going to paint that? No. You said you were. Well, I said it was a good idea. Oh. Um, I can paint it for you right now if you'd like me to. Well, you can't paint it no, I as can. easily once it's glued on. That's true, but I can still paint it. Yes, Debbie, Anna is getting picked on by Becca. So, nothing really new, though. She's got it freezing in here, guys. Freezing. My nose is running. Whoa! I have a cardigan and a blanket on. <laughs> um, in full, full disclosure, Anna um, gives it just as much as she receives the criticism. <laughs> that is true. For instance, I did have to wash my hair today because Anna dunked me in a pool yesterday. <laughs> you were already in the pool. My though. hair was not. <laughs> my hair was not in the pool. Okay. I I'll, just was trying to love on her and she was pushing me off. I don't really consider that love. <laughs> Does not make my love tank full. I'm not I'm not a physical touch. Same. Person in anyway. fact, I'm sort of in the negative. If you could be in the negative, I'd be in the negative. <laughs> So I know that you were just being mean and not trying to love on me. Yeah, that's me. exactly what happened. Uh, but I think that negative attention is like my love language, honestly. So it's like one in the yeah, same. Yeah, why can't they make that a love language? Like being mean? Negative, I don't yeah. know, because physical touch, I think I'm like 5% on that love language test. I mean, honestly, Rachel and I both give each other love <laughs> by being mean to each other. Becca, look at your dog. What is she doing? She's being an attention W. Oh, she just wants a loving. Okay, I am using this paintbrush because I've already glued it down and because I'm trying to make Anna happy by making this black. Otherwise, I like to use uh, a sponge, like I mentioned earlier, with MDF. And so we'll use that in just a second. The nice thing about this is you don't have to be super careful with the black because the sides are black where the laser has burned the sides. And burn makes it sounds like it's not supposed to be, but it, it is, so it did what it was supposed to. Debbie said her Gorilla wood glue was so goopy it wouldn't spread. Ew, get some new. Was it this brand, Debbie? Did it maybe not get closed all the way or something? Like, I know that stuff will, like, my paints and stuff will get goopy if I don't close them good. Mine doesn't, yeah, this one hasn't gotten goopy at all, which it's, uh, we bought it in October, so what, eight months old? Yeah. Ellie, you got some mats. Leave her alone, Anna. Oh, no. Leave you can't alone. brush yourself because you don't have them. Look how sad so she is. Sad. It's so sad. She's devastated. Okay. Let's move this over to the side and it can dry. Anna, does that make your heart a lot happier? Actually, that top right corner, is that glue or did you miss a spot? It's glue. Okay. I approve then. Okay. Thanks. No problem. Okay. Let's start out with our yellow here. Yeah, if I'd known that, I wouldn't have hugged you at the campground. She doesn't love physical touch she either? She says, I'm better at being sarcastic than hugs, but I give in to peer pressure and hug people. Me too, Kat, <laughs> me too. I could have just been mean to you instead. <laughs> she probably would have liked that. I know. Kat, I saw that you all made ice cream this weekend, but I didn't even ask what flavor you made. So what flavor ice cream did you make? And for everyone else watching, do oh, you... Oh, dear God. What? Mar or Wayne's that he made that tasted just like a stick of big big, big red gum. I, ha I didn't taste it. it. It actually tasted like those old school red cinnamon discs that your papa gets with those butterscotch discs. Yeah. He made peanut butter as well, and I didn't try it either. But anyway, do do any of you all, is that a 4th of July tradition for you all too? We homemade seem to always make homemade ice cream for 4th of, well actually we sort of make homemade ice cream for every event, but 
except winter events. We don't make the ice cream then. Whenever Kat responds, what flavor she makes? Vanilla made? custard. Oh my gosh. That'd be my favorite. God, you're boring. I love vanilla. I will never, ever, ever. I, in fact, I am more likely to pass up ice cream if vanilla is the only flavor. Such a weird. It's not that I, it's, I just don't care for it. It's, it's got not, such a pure taste. It's, it's, it has no taste. Yeah, it's got lots of taste. Oh my gosh. Now, although I do like Chick-fil-A's ice cream. That's vanilla. I know. I don't know why. I can't explain it. Okay. So I haven't even, for those of you who are regular Oak and Lammers, you already know what I'm doing. But for those of you who don't, I'm using the sponge and just going up and down to basically blot the paint on there. Um, I like this method because it doesn't have brush strokes, which is nice. And it's just pretty easy, especially with MDF. I wouldn't necessarily want to do this on wood or something that I, I need a good finish on, like a, a really nice polished professional finish because you're not going to get that with this method. Um, but with MDF, it, it's pretty nice. Now, one thing I will say about painting MDF is that a lot of times you are going to need more than one coat. The darker colors like the black, I tend to only need one, but the lighter colors or yellowy and reds and things like that, that uh, tend to be more see-through in pigment in general, you're going to probably want two coats on unless you want it to be sort of a vintagey, roughly finished looking something. So um, I'm only going to put one coat on this one today. I've put two on the one that is pre-finished up there. So you can kind of get an idea of what it would look like uh, with, with both uh, one and two coats. Almost finished here with this. The other nice thing about MDF and using a sponge is that it dries pretty quickly. Like I will be able to touch this and put all of it together without getting super disgusting. So that's nice. Anna, huh? did anybody else make ice cream for 4th of July? No, but they made the old school one with the eggs in it like Mama used to. You remember that blue Tupperware bowl she'd put it in in her freezer? Uh, really quickly, why do you put egg in it? Like, is there... I'm curious. For the salmonellas. <laughs> that's, what, that's what flavor it should be called. Salmonella. Salmonella. <laughs> Sal, sal vanilla. <laughs> oh. <laughs> and I think she's super funny. Actually, a lot of times she is really funny. <laughs> and our husbands don't appreciate our humor quite as much as we do. <laughs> Mark just looks at me. I think, I think they just expect it. I think it's because I laugh too much before I get the funny part out. He probably like can't a, hear what you said. He's like annoyed with me. <laughs> because that makes it custard. It is cooked. Now, mammals were raw eggs. Yeah. That's the way us Southerners do it. Southerners. <laughs> That's why we get the salvanella. I've never heard of cooked ice cream, no, I Scott. Either. I haven't either. Okay, so to use this sponge again, I am just going to take my lovely scissors and cut off this part. Oh, look, it's still yellow. No, right there, but I don't even <laughs> want to touch that. It's going to go right here. Elliot, please quit. Make her go away. Ellie, lay down. Go get your baby. You lay down, Ellie. Go get your baby, Ellie. For those of you who did not know, Elliot is a dog. That's why she's being talked to like a dog. A dog. <laughs> okay. Anna, do you have any good jokes for them? I actually had a good one the other day. Oh, Did no. you forget about it? Yeah, hold on. It was so funny. Which means it may or may not actually be <laughs> funny. That's probably terrible. <laughs> you remembered it? No, I just found a new one. Oh, no. <laughs> it says, 
Why do bees have sticky hair? Wait, why do bees? Bees, like bumblebees. Okay. Uh, I don't know, Anna. Why? Because they use honeycombs. <laughs> <laughs> well. <coughs> Sometimes I think jokes like that are really funny, and other times I think they're not. I guess you have to be in a mood for them. Anna, what's for dinner tonight? You're just grumpy. Hot dogs. Really? Are you having hot dogs? Yes, because I didn't have one yesterday, and I, I didn't told either. Mark that I didn't feel American. I didn't have a hot dog either. Normally, Anna's Fourth of July shirt has hot dogs on it. <laughs> like that's how committed to hot dogs I she love is. I hot dogs. I literally had a T-shirt one year that was the American flag made out of hot dogs. Yep. Um, Jenny says, "Why would you do all of the itty bitty pieces?" What do you mean? Like paint them. Why would you paint them so that they're pretty? Is that what you mean? I don't. I don't know. Maybe I missed. Yeah. Uh, Judy Stout says I've always been a hugger, but two years ago I must have died of kidney failure, and since then I'm irresistibly compelled to tell everyone that I love them. Oh, <laughs> I love it. Well, you can tell me you love me without hugging me, though. <laughs> Now, here's my problem with hugs. I actually used to love hugs. My problem with hugs is when people give me a hug and they, like, pat my back and, and don't, don't really me. hug me, I don't appreciate that. And so I think it has turned me off to good hugs. Because, to be honest, when Beckett was in utero, I was praying for specific things. For, actually, even before then, we made a list of things that we prayed for um, in Beckett. And one of the things was that he would be a good hugger. And I'll be darned if that kid is not the best hugger he in the really world. Is. Um, Debbie, I prefer all beef or turkey dogs. I don't like those mystery ones. I don't like beef hot dogs. Like like rat dogs. You I don't like, like beef hot dogs. No I, uh, no, I like chicken or turkey. It's true. Sister. What? You always eat beef hot dogs at my house. I know. That's what I'm going to continue to make. I know. Okay, I'm going to cut this off here. She said, what I meant is why would you make this with all little pieces instead of painting one bigger piece with the pattern? Because some people can't freehand that. Some people can't freehand the pattern. I think maybe she's saying, like, why wouldn't you just, like, print? Print a pattern onto the wood and then paint it. I just gives it a really because cool some effect. people can, and some people can't freehand it. Yeah, like it, painting that is more difficult than painting these individually and then placing right, them in there. Right, because then your your lines and everything. You're a pretty terrible painter, aren't you? I'm terrible at painting. Yeah, it's not my it's not my strong point. Um. I had something else I was going to ask, and I forgot what it was. Crystal made old-fashioned ice cream for the 4th of July. That is my favorite. Nice. Oh, it wasn't a question. Did you all see my reel on Instagram of the shirts that we made for everyone? We did superlatives for our July 4th get-together for our family. There were 38 shirts that we made. Um... Anna came in, thank God, and helped me line them all up because I hate lining them up. But then we pulled out our auto press, and that thing, Anna, was that not amazing? Yeah, I didn't even know that it self-opened, and I thought it was like demon-possessed for a minute. Yes, Wait, but... I just have to stop for two seconds. Megan says, please, everyone, hug your children. My brother and sister-in-law do not, and their children have been deeply affected. How do you not hug babies? Oh my gosh. My kids, I will literally, they'll be playing in another room and I'm like, Back up! and I make him come in there just so I can give him a hug and a kiss. And I'm like, okay, go play. I, I, I think I, that children love, like, heal your soul. Oh my gosh, it, they like do. The best thing in the entire, I'm not a hugger at all. And I will slobber and love all over Becca's kids. Ugh. And Fallon says, ew, ew. That's wucky. That's wucky. <clears throat> I, feel, I, I need to go hug your brother and sister-in-law's children. Give them some lovings. Yeah, no, I agree, Megan. And I know there's, like, controversy over kissing your kids and all that stuff. I, I really, I kiss my kids. Debbie said that the shirts went by so fast they couldn't 
she couldn't read some of the great sayings. Yes, well, part of the problem was that I was limited to 30 seconds, but I do have a photo of everyone wearing them, so I'm going to share that with you all. Oh. Yeah, are you excited, Amy? Where did you get the photo? It's in the shared album. I'm not, I'm not a part of any of the shared albums. Well, no one in our family really likes you. I know. Okay, these are good enough. So, it, oh, I just put white paint. <gasps> it's okay. It's fine, Anna. It's no, it's gray there now. I'm going to fix it. Thank you. I had a little white paint on my hand. There we go. Does that make you happy? And then, Anna, let me ask you this. What? Would you put glue all over here and then place them, or would you put glue on each individual piece? I put glue on each individual piece here, and I kind of, on this turn, no, want I to do it, it all, all over. over and That's what, do okay, it. done. We're doing it. That's what we're doing. Okay. Don't put too much or it'll squish I'm not, up. I'm not. And one thing that you can do is you can spread it with your finger. You can spread it with a brush, whatever you want to do. But you don't, like Anna said, you, you don't need a lot of glue here. You don't want it to squish up, and you just don't need it. So I've got good coverage here, but it's not thick. Okay, that's gonna be good, Anna. That's, that's a good talk. It's a good decision. And now we're just gonna place. Kathy says, my ex-husband doesn't hug the kids, or at least very rarely. I'm hoping that's why he's your ex, Kathy. He's not a hugger. Not a hugger, not hugging baby. You don't have to tell us why he's your ex, by the way. No, you don't have to. You don't have to elaborate at all. No. <laughs> Unless it's therapeutic for you. That's what we're here for. Crafting and therapy and food talk. Do love food. Yep. 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 So Friday night, my, my brother-in-law likes to smoke meat, and they invited us over for um, oxtail, which y'all know I'm not really big into meat. Oxtail? Oxtail. I called it ox ass. It was so funny. Yeah. You know. I know. I'm so sorry. But anyway, they had found it. Normally, it's like $9 a pound or something like that. And the grocery store that she found it at had mislabeled it. It was 69 cents oh, a pound. Where did she find it? I can't remember. But so, of course, Jared made some like bougie mashed potatoes and Brussels sprouts. And, yeah, her brother-in-law came. Oh, it was heaven. And then she made this awesome like corn pudding, making me very hungry. I'm also hungry because I've had waffles today. That's it. Waffles? My kids asked for waffles this morning, so I made them for I've them. I've got that Belgian waffle maker. Yeah, well, I had a one, an itty-bitty mini waffle maker, so I sat there for like 30 minutes making waffles. Oh, cat. By the way, after, what are we calling those pudgy pies? What are they called? Pudgy pies. Okay, so we never called them that, but that's all I've been able to think about since you talked about that at the camp, campground. And now Did you get a snack, sir? I, I have to find one and, and order it. I need one bad. We made, we've made pudgy pies a lot since that camp trip. I wonder if you could do it with like Nutella and make chocolate pudgy pies. Well, Kat was saying that you can use... Um, Marshmallows. No, fruit, like like the canned cherries and strawberries and stuff. And do what? Like the fruit pie filling ones, yes. Yes. Oh my God. Do you put like the cream cheese spread in there too? Well, that would be That'd be amazing. Tasty. Yeah. Like that goo that you'd put on the, um, like the crescent rolls with the cherry pie filling. That it's like yeah. cream cheese and powdered sugar or something. Okay, I'm still just placing this. And if I didn't have one right here, I would just be referencing the file that um, we have. Oh, yeah. Megan says, don't worry, Becca. Oxtail is not part of an ox. It's still from, a, from beef. Why do they call it oxtail? Curious. Yes. Does anyone know that? Linda wants to know what a pudgy pie is, Becca. It's heaven. It's heaven. Heaven, Miss Linda. Heaven, yeah. We'll change your life. Uh, it's actually, it's like a snack stir. That's what we used to call them. It's basically, ours that we make is bread, uh, and you put butter on it and stick it in this, like, um... It's like a panini it's like press, a panini press. for sandwiches. And it makes well, a man, line down the middle of your sandwich, <clears throat> or this diagonally so that it it's pudgy but anyway we put um it like pre pre-cuts them yeah we put tomato sauce and mozzarella, mozzarella and the kids like pepperoni in theirs and make ours pizza but you can do just like cheese or whatever you want look it up on the googles guys yeah. and then order pudgy, one and then you can thank us 
We can post recipes. Kat says fruit and pudding in them. Oh, pudding. <coughs> All right. How easy was this? So I've seen these a lot, and I, I've seen um, or you could do like this with the hook, or you can make them like two. So you would cut two of them out and layer them. Basically, you would need to make a new frame. You would need to cut this piece out so that these were right next to each other. And then people will cut out their house numbers and, and do like 3606. <laughs> what? Anyway, and make this for the outside of their house um, to designate their, their house number, which I think is really cute. Yes, Anna. I'm just reading, everyone's like, what the heck's a pudgy pie? <laughs> it's life changing. I'd never heard it called a pudgy pie. I thought that Beth I- Beth said, did someone say wooden home decor? Right, <laughs> right, Beth? So stinking cute. So what, what I would do, and I'm not gonna do it because it's wet, but I, I, what I would do is take these sawtooth hangers, which I kind of refer to as alligator hangers sometimes, and then just put these in the back so that it can easily uh, be hung. And then you have a really cute project. So, is mom on here? Mama! I'm just gonna put it on this one since you like the black better. Your and paint looks a little translucent. It is. Oh. It's a vintage look. <laughs> You needed to have like sanded the edges before you put them in. No, if you see it in person, it looks great. It would have looked super cute. Are you saying it's not cute? That's what I'm hearing. Cat says they're also known as hobo pies. That's true. Cat, why would a hobo carry around something like that in his in his sack? No, a hobo because it it. Oh God, you know. Um. So you notice how I'm not putting glue everywhere on this. It will be completely fine. It's going to adhere really nicely here. And I might have gotten a couple of spots that have a little bit too much glue. Hmm. And so what I want to do is just take a brush. Let me take one that's actually not disgusting and wipe off the excess. Now this will dry clear too, but sometimes you can see even though it's clear, it looks shiny compared to the other part. So I like to go ahead and get it off if I see it. Just pull that off there. And then I have the little dot of the eye that I'm going to use these reverse tweezers because it's so small. And I'll put it on there. And then we have a cute little project. Now, I haven't even talked about it this entire time because Rachel's not here to remind me, but if you like this project and if you like this file, then you need to become an Oakenland member because right now we are offering a fantastic deal on our annual subscription. Um, if you wanna go to me, Anna, then I will share with them the code it's $35 off your first year of membership here at Oak and Lamb, and that makes the first year $164, which breaks down. I've already done this once and I've lost my phone. It's like 12-ish per month, but you do pay for it all at once. But when you break it down like that, that's very, very affordable. Um, and so if you like everyone here at Oak and Lamb. Banter and ridicule. Yes. It's the cheapest banter and ridicule you'll ever have. Ever, yeah. Um, if, hold on. Rachel's watching. She says, hello, everyone. Charlie and I say hello from the beach. Hello, Rachel. Did, how did Charlie like the fireworks? Did they scare him? Did he sleep through him? Was he okay? Also, she said that he got a life, a life, um, guard job while he was down there already. H has he saved anyone yet, Rach? Yeah. He, he's a, he's like a super baby. Yeah. Okay. Here's the code. It's, it's three, five O F F. Um, and you get $35 off and join, click the link. We would love to have you. We need to have you. We need to make money here so that we can continue to craft with you all. Um, but if you're wondering what that membership includes, and it does give you access to our entire library of cut files, which we just added to today. And I go back to my computer and I want to show them our new files that we have added. I added 25 new 
bridal cut files. And we had some members asking if you could view the files more than eight to a page, and you can do that. Um, in, in a specific way. Instead of coming up to cut files, if you'll just click right here where this hourglass is, then it will bring up every single cut file and there are 12 to a page when you do that. See this? And then you can just scroll through all those pages. Now we can make that a whole lot easier to search by going up to cut files and selecting specific categories. But for this purpose, I'm just gonna show you here. These are some of the new files that are great for bachelorette parties, engagement parties, um, bridal parties, anything like that. There are three different versions of basically all of them. So you have Maid of Honor in three different fun um, fonts. And then we have another page of them as well. Dazed and Engaged, I thought that was hysterical. Bride Squad, and then there's another one, I think it just says Bride over here, that makes 25. But um, you do get access to the entire library. Yes, Anna? I've not seen the expensive and difficult. <laughs> yeah. I don't think we've gone through these either. These I launched, feel like that's so me. <laughs> these launched last week. Did you see the Jeep life? Because Anna, no. you love Jeep. And then the Jeep Duck. <clears throat> Bougie like Natty in the these styrofoam. These are amazing. I've right? not seen any of these. Yes. Oh my gosh, I love it. Anyway, access to all of these files with a free commercial use license is included with that membership as well as um, access to our our private Facebook group and member only content there. And then we're also planning, we've already filmed it, we are editing and fine tuning um, our beginner cricket course that we have going out and that will be included with all memberships. Um, and we have other plans for more to, to roll out this year as well. So uh, grab that while it is at a great discount. We chose $35 because Ann and I celebrated our 35th birthday last week. Uh, so we wanted to celebrate with you and give you a great deal. Anyway, what did Rachel say about uh, Baby Charlie? She said that he's like a natural and been saving people. She also wants to know what's with the flowers. Aren't they beautiful? She said they are gorgeous. They're gorgeous. Anna's client, I love this face too. Yep, a little it's, bit. it's carnival glass. I'm a little bit jealous of it. Anna's client, uh, Anna's a hairstylist and she actually cut her today, brought these to her. She is an exceptional gardener and these are beautiful. I don't even know what they are. She told me, but she's such a phenomenal gardener that she plants things that I don't even know what they are, but I'm gonna have to plant None some of, them of those smell. green things. They're beautiful. They're gorgeous. And she like she arranged them perfectly. They're yeah. not too perfect. No, I, I it's, love it's beautiful. Love, love it. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Um Megan Did you said, order the baggy holder? I did. Yes, I did. What's a baggy holder? It's this, um, it's this stand that has these little clips on it and you put sandwich bags or whatever kind of bags on it. So like when I'm dumping the um, devil or the deviled egg filling or icing or something <gasps> like that in a bag, I don't have to make I need plain the hold link it. to that. Yeah, I'll, I'll send it to you. Uh, actually, just, just get on our Amazon. I ordered it there. Ellie, do not bark. Don't do it. You good girl, she mouse. Do you want to say hi? Come here, Ellie. Come here. Oh, you're gonna bring I'm gonna your bring your bag. Come here. Go get mommy. Come on. Come here. What are, what are you doing? Come on, say hi. Say hi to everyone. Say hi. She bought her baby. That's her baby. That's baby ducky. Are you nervous? Are you nervous? Okay. The green flowers, yes, these right here. Wait, this or this? These stem thingies. That's my favorite part is this right here. Do you yeah, remember I'm what that is? Yeah, I'm gonna have to text her and ask her again because I do want to grow some of those. Uh, I was looking at other comments. I am too. Did I say hourglass? It is a magnifying glass. You're right, Kathy. Thank you for that. Um... Anyway, I haven't seen any other comments. If there's anything else I need to address, let me know. I don't think everyone thinks that Ellie's, Ellie's sweet. She is. She needs a haircut. <laughs> Debbie says stem thingy. Yes. Yeah, Isn't I like cute? that, Debbie. Love that. I do too. We need to figure out what that's called. <laughs> um, maybe Vanessa can give us a diagram. Maybe. Yeah. 
I'm sure she would love that. Yeah. Okay. She she was like an ag major in college. A what? An ag major. Oh, agriculture. Yeah. I thought you said ad like advertisement. Ag. Was like... <clears throat> okay. But yes, thank you, Miss Susan. Fun project. It was fun, wasn't it? And if you have a glow forge or a laser cutter, it's super easy to make things like this. However, we did mention it. If you have a Maker 3 and don't have a laser printer, then you can still cut this out of chipboard. It will just take a little bit longer, uh, but worth it. It's super cute and very fun to create things like this. Um... Mod Podge fabric or what? Was that to me or was it to somebody else, Tina? Let me know. Uh, okay. Have a fantastic evening, everyone. Be here tomorrow at 6 p.m. Eastern. Um, is there any instruction with that? Do you have any instructions for them? Any get your questions together for that would be good if they have this process. If you are going to be coming live, I know Beth was curious about um, peg peg boards. <laughs> as well. So if you have specific questions or uh, yeah, really, if if you do, that's going to be super helpful because I can tell you what I know, but. Like teaching a design eye is a little bit hard. It so is. if you have yeah. pointed specific things, that's going to be a whole lot easier for me to guide you yeah. than to just volunteer information. Absolutely. Um, <coughs> anyway, we will see you all tomorrow. Have a fantastic evening and we can't wait to craft with you again.